Before the match, the doping control officer or DCO and her assistant prepare the doping control room, ensuring that it's in perfect condition for the procedure that will later take place. In the 75th minute of the match, the representatives of each team take part in the random draw for the four players who will be tested after the game. The number of each token represents the number of a player on the team sheet. It is then the duty of the four team chaperones to wait for the selected players. After the final whistle, they guide them to the doping control waiting room. Visiting the team dressing rooms or anywhere else is not allowed. For urine testing, the players are given water to drink, and when they are ready to give their sample, they enter the doping control room. According to the FIFA anti-doping regulations, the player should handle the samples herself. The player is accompanied to the bathroom by the DCO or the assistant. After pulling her shorts down to her knees and her shirt up to her bra, the player urinates into the beaker under the supervision of the DCO or the assistant. At all times, the DCO or the assistant must have an unobstructed view of the urine leaving the player's body. The minimum amount of urine required is 90 mil. Okay. So I'll get you to go here with Monica. The sample is divided into bottle A and bottle B. So we have, if you turn it around, so it has uh, 110. The urine sample needs to be a certain concentration. If it is too diluted, then more volume is needed to find all the substances being tested for. The bottles and boxes are then sealed and put into plastic cases for air travel. Throughout the whole procedure, the player and the team representative have to be present. Both are required to check the forms thoroughly and sign them. That way, if there is an adverse analytical finding, the player cannot say the process was not done properly. In some cases, a player produces less than 90 mil, and this is called a partial sample. So it's certainly a partial sample. <laughs> this partial sample is sealed in a cover and saved until additional urine can be produced. The player has to stay in the doping control waiting room. For legal reasons and to protect the player's privacy, the bottles and boxes are marked with an identical number. As soon as the player has produced more urine, the first sample is opened again and then mixed with a second sample and the test is completed in the correct way. Only the doping control officer keeps the names of the players that refer to the samples. The anonymous samples are couriered to a laboratory where the testing procedure is completed. The results are then sent to FIFA. Good night. Safe drive.